Hello students. In the previous video, we have studied about how image is formed by a plane mirror. Now in this video, we are going to continue with chapter 10 light, but we are going to start with now spherical mirrors. Let us try to understand what are spherical mirrors. Now let us consider a hollow glass sphere. This is a sphere which is made up of glass and it is hollow. So let us consider a hollow glass sphere made up of a glass obviously. Let us take a small part of it, cut a small part of this sphere and polish it from the outer side, outer bulging side. Then obviously this part of the sphere which is polished from one side is now acting like a concave mirror. It is acting like a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. It means to form the image, to see the image, one has to stand in front of this side. So concave mirror is a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. What are spherical mirrors? Spherical mirrors are the mirrors which are formed out of spheres which are made up of glass. Now this is again, this is again a spherical mirror. But what is the difference between these two? That here polishing is done on the inner side of this part of the mirror. We have taken a part of hollow glass sphere and polished it on the inner side. So this part of the hollow glass sphere now is acting like a spherical mirror. But in this case it is convex mirror. So in other words there are two types of spherical mirrors. Concave mirror, convex mirror. Spherical mirrors are the mirrors which are formed from hollow glass sphere by cutting a part of it and polishing it on one of the two sides of the this, this part. So concave mirror is a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. Convex mirror is a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards. Inner side is polished. Now let us see few terms related with the spherical mirrors. Let us try to understand them. One is pole of mirror which is generally represented by P. I have also mentioned about this when we were drawing the ray diagram for image formation by a plane mirror. Now here we can see this is P. So what is P? P is the geometrical center of the reflecting surface of this mirror. The geometrical center of the reflecting surface of the mirror is called as its pole and it is represented by letter capital P. So here we can see the two poles of the two mirrors. Aperture. What is aperture? Now when you see this part of the mirror, it will appear like this. When you see it from front, the outline boundary of this part of this concave or convex mirror will be circular. So this diameter, the outer the diameter of the outer circular boundary of the concave or convex mirror or we can say spherical mirror is called as aperture of the spherical mirror. What is aperture of the spherical mirror? The diameter of the reflecting surface of the mirror is called as its aperture. Principal axis. We can see this dotted line now. Okay. So this is the principal axis. Before we see principal axis, let us see first see center of curvature. Now what is center of curvature? This concave mirror or convex mirror, both are formed out of hollow glass spheres. Spheres have center. So center of the hollow glass sphere of which the spherical mirror forms a part is called as its center of curvature. It is represented by capital C center of the hollow glass sphere of which the spherical mirror forms a part is called as its center of curvature. And from this diagrams we can see that center of curvature of concave mirror lies in front of it and center of curvature of convex mirror lies behind it. Next radius of curvature which is represented by capital R. Now radius of curvature as we can see from the figure, radius, so obviously radius is what? Radius of the hollow glass sphere of which mirror forms a part is called as its radius of curvature. Or in other words we can say that 
the distance between the center of curvature and pole distance between the center of curvature and pole of a spherical mirror is called as its radius of curvature and it is represented by capital R. Now two terms are left. Principal focus which is represented by capital F. Here I have not shown this principal focus and focal length is represented by small f. We are going to study that now. Now to understand principal focus and focal length of spherical mirrors, let us try to understand these ray diagrams first. Now if object is far away from the mirror, let us say this is a concave mirror and the object is far away from the mirror. Then the rays coming from the mirror, sorry, coming from the object and falling on the mirror, very close to the mirror, they appear to be parallel when the object is very far away from the mirror. It is like when we see the sun rays coming from sun, although they are coming out from sun like this, but when they reach us, for us they appear to be parallel. So it means when the object is far away, we can consider the rays to be parallel. So in this case, I consider the rays coming out from an object which is far away. This is one ray and let me choose this another ray. So these two rays are coming from an object which is far away from this concave mirror. Now I want to get the image of that object. How will I get? Again the same rule that we have to get the two reflected rays and see where they meet or appear to meet. Now here how will I draw the normal? At the spherical surface I can draw the normal like this. Join the center of curvature and the point of incidence on the mirror. So this dotted line is representing the normal at this point. This is my incident ray, this is a normal. So if I draw the reflected ray such that I is equal to R, I can get this is my reflected ray. So this is now one incident ray and I have drawn the normal like this. I have drawn the normal like this and I have drawn the reflected rays such that I is equal to R. This is another incident ray coming from the object which is far away. So again I have to draw the normal here. How will I draw the normal? By joining the center of curvature and this point of incidence. So now I is equal to R, so my reflected ray will lie on the other side such that this I will be equal to R. If this is an incident ray, this is my reflected ray and this is another incident ray coming from the object which is far away, this is now my reflected ray. So we see that the two reflected rays meet at this point. Let us represent it by F. So what is F? It is a point on the principal axis where the rays parallel to the principal axis meet in case of concave mirror is called as its principal focus. Now let us get the focus of this convex mirror. Now in this case I have just drawn first the principal axis of this convex mirror. P is a pole, C is a center of curvature, MM dash is the aperture. Again I will take two parallel rays. These are two incident rays and I will draw the normal again by joining this point of incidence and center of curvature. Again draw the normal at this 
point for the other incident ray, for the other point of incidence, this is point B. Now, extend it. So these two are the incident rays which are coming from an object which is far away from this convex mirror. Now I have to get the image of the object. So I have to get the point where the rays meet or appear to meet after reflection. We know the reflected image uh, ray will lie on the other side of the normal in such a way that these two angles are equal because I is equal to R. This is my reflected ray and here this is my reflected ray. So just by approximately taking the two angles to be equal, here the two angles are equal, here the two angles are equal, we can get the reflected rays. Using construction as you have studied in maths, you can draw these two rays such that the two angles are equal but here we can approximately draw them. So the two reflected rays when we see here they are diverging they will not meet. So I have produced them backward this ray and this I again produced it backward and get the point where the, these two reflected rays appear to meet and name it as F. So this F is a point on the principal axis where the rays parallel to the principal axis appear to meet after reflection. This is called as principal focus of a convex mirror. I'll repeat it once again. So when we take parallel rays which are parallel to the principal axis, after reflection from a concave mirror, they meet at a point which is lying on the principal axis is called as a focus of the mirror and a point on the principal axis where the rays parallel to the principal axis after reflection appear to meet on the principal axis this point is called as principal focus of a convex mirror. Now in this case we see that the rays actually meet so the focus is of a concave mirror is a real focus. In this case, focus is formed because the reflected rays appear to meet. So this focus of convex mirror is a virtual focus. So if someone asks you what define focus of a spherical mirror, how will you define? Focus of a spherical mirror is a point on the principal axis where the rays parallel to the principal axis meet or appear to meet after reflection. So for concave mirror which is having this aperture much smaller than the radius of curvature aperture much smaller than the radius of curvature this focus lies exactly midway between C and P. It means it is a point it is a midpoint of CP here also, when the aperture is much smaller than the radius of curvature, then in that case, focus lies mid midway between P and C. So we have assumed here that the rays are parallel to principal axis and in higher classes you will study that we have to choose the rays which are parallel to the principal axis and lie close to it. So these rays which are parallel should not be drawn far away from principal axis. You should draw them close to the principal axis only. So in a point on the principal axis where the rays parallel to the principal axis meet or appear to meet after reflection is called as principal focus of a spherical mirror. And in case of concave mirror, the rays parallel to the principal axis meet at a point on the principal axis. That point is called as focus of a concave mirror. In case of convex mirror, the rays which are parallel to principal axis appear to meet after reflection at a point on the principal axis which is called as principal focus of a convex mirror. Now what is focal length? Focal length is very simple. Distance between focus and pole of the mirror is called as focal length of the mirror. So distance between P and F pole and principal focus of a spherical mirror. Here this FP is the focus of the concave mirror, this 
and in this case this PF distance this PF is focal length of the convex mirror. So we'll study about the spherical mirrors in the how image is formed by spherical mirrors in our next video but before that I have to end up saying that this is just like when you take a concave mirror and place it in front of sun and place a paper here and try to get the bright spot on the paper here change by changing this distance when the bright spot is formed wait for some time that bright spot starts smoke starts coming out from that bright spot that spot where the rays coming from sun converges after reflection from a concave mirror is is the point that is principal focus of the concave mirror so we'll continue with this in the next video